So the first part of this that we're going to make is actually the gauntlet parts. It's going to be the stuff that's got the most work. So for this, I'm using a five millimeter thick piece of EVA foam as opposed to the uh, one centimeter thick stuff we use for the helmet. And again, I've just worked out a basic little paper template that can uh, be cut out. As you can see, it's a slight cone shape and it's down to about the width that I want it on my arm. I don't want it too close to the, the wrist or the elbow just so I can help bend because you think we're going to have a uh, chain mail underneath so that's going to add a little bit more restrictiveness to the movement. So I'm just going to draw this out. And now just cut it out with a nice sharp blade. Now they've been cut out, they just need a little bit of assistance to help them mould into shape. The stuff bends quite well, but it'll bend a lot easier when it's been heated with a heat gun. Now, got some nice trusty barge cement to glue these pieces together. If you can't find this or contact a piece similar to this, you can use hot glue. It just doesn't stick quite as well. You do have to be patient with it while the hot glue dries. And remember, less is more, because if you put too much hot glue on there and squeeze it together, it will start coming out of the seams and then you need to do more cleanup. So I got some 2mm foam here which I'm going to use for uh, the detailing like metal strips that are going to go over the top of the base gauntlet shapes. Now learning from last time that uh, doing a hammered metal effect uh, when you put something already on the gauntlets and then heating it up means your seams are going to start to come apart. So I'm going to do the hammered effect on this bit first, get it to how I want it, then cut it up and stick them on the gauntlets. Okay, so this is the little sculpting tool I was using, just it's got a little round end to just sort of jam into the foam. It doesn't work too well if you just have it just without folding it over, because it's quite thin, but if you fold it over it has a little bit more bounce and can help get some of the detail in. Then I just went back over it with the heat gun just to bring it up a little bit so it didn't look too round and indented. So we've got a nice bit of texturized foam here, so I'm just going to cut that into strips and that's going to be used. Now we've got all the uh, metal parts on. Time to seal it for painting. So I'm gonna use the same thing that I used for the helmet. Just a little bit of PVA. I'm just gonna do one layer on this. Gotta make sure it's watered down enough. That it's not too gloopy. PVA glue's all dried now, so this is nice and sealed. So I'm gonna get on with painting these. I'm gonna hand paint them using acrylic paints. So first up, I'm gonna do the brown, uh, what is leather on the actual costume, but I'll just sort of make it look a little bit leathery. So I've done a couple of layers of brown acrylic on the base but I need to give it a little bit more dimension, so I'm going to go over it with a couple of different colours. I have a little bit of orange and a little bit of this portrait pink. Because this brush isn't a very neat brush, it's good for adding streaks to it. I'm just going to lightly go over it with the different colours just to add a little bit more depth to the fake leather, as it were. And just play about with it until I'm happy with it. Just trying to dry my brush off a little bit and just gently go over it so it doesn't give it like the full colour but enough to add little highlights to it now it's a bit hard to see on the camera so I've just moved over here but 
can see the slight differences between having sort of the orange just going over the top of that and just having a plain brown. There's a little bit more depth on the edges and when you're painting this stuff on it does dry darker than when you first paint it on so don't think oh god I've gone too light. So I'm going to go over this one with one more bit of colour and then show you the difference between the finished painted leather bit and just the brown. So now it's time to paint the metal sections of these uh, little bracer gauntlets, whatever, whatever these forearm parts are going to be called. Now I've got some nice silver acrylic paint and I'm going to use a little bit of sponge to paint them on. Whereas with the uh, leather painting I wanted to use um, a fairly ratty brush for it and to paint in one direction so you do get constant brush stroke to give it a nice bit of texture but don't want that texture for the metal. So this stops you getting brush strokes and uh, it works a lot better putting this stuff on with a sponge than it does with a brush. Now all the silver's on, I'm just going to give everything a go over with uh, some black acrylic and maybe a little bit more brown just to give it a dirty wash and getting all the grooves and getting some of the dents that are on our little bits of silver plating. Paint job is all done and there's just one little bit of detail left to do which is why I've left this gap here and on my reference image it looks like there's kind of like rivets or something similar to that that holds together the leather on these uh, braces here and so just to easily give that image we've got these little push pins just a simple little pack of silver push pins we four on each so I'm just going to push them in and then on the other side use some hot glue just to cover up the little uh, spiky part and make sure that it's glued in and it won't pop out. Now we get to work on a pretty cool part of this build and something that will be done in a lot greater detail moving forward uh, to create the full version of this costume. So the Templar Knights have lots of chainmail covering them, including on the hands. Chainmail is something you can buy online and make yourself. It takes a lot of work to do. I know someone who's done chainmail for a couple of costumes and they hate doing it. But I've got a different, cheaper version of doing chainmail. This is something that I saw years ago and I'm only now just getting around to putting it into practice in a costume. So these are tabs off of soda cans. These ones are off of cans of Diet Coke because my dad drinks a lot of Diet Coke so... This is uh, a couple of months worth of uh, Diet Coke cans and this will be enough just to do uh, some of the hands. Basically how this works is you cut a little bit of the uh, tab at the very top and you hook it into the bottom of another tab and then you can actually create this layered chainmail effect. So if you are someone that gets through a lot of cans or maybe if you work somewhere where you get through a lot of soda cans, keep the tabs because they will be useful. But if you're thinking, oh dear god, I do not want to spend ages and ages collecting these, you can find them on eBay. People collect them and sell them to raise money for charity because they know it gets used in arts and crafts. The reference images in the game that I've seen, uh, some of the Templar Knights go without gloves, bare hands, or have full chainmail 
hands. I know from experience with trying this ages ago that if you try and do a full chain mail glove out of this you will not be able to bend your fingers and it'll be quite chunky and it won't look very good. So I've got these which is a pair of old leather gloves that I've had for years. You can tell because that there's a hole in them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain mail the back of these gloves. I'm not gonna do the palms because I still want to be able to see bend my hands because I'm gonna want to hold a sword and obviously to be able to pick things up and still have movement when I'm at conventions. So I'm going to put all the chainmail together that I want and then I'm going to actually sew it into the fabric of the glove. So what you want to do to link these together to create chainmail is just so you get one of these, take it off the can, make sure you've got no sharp edges on them. And I just bend them on the edge of my desk so they got a nice curve to them. And you can cut these with scissors but that doesn't work too well, you've got to put a lot of pressure on it. I got these which are I think are used for gardening, for trimming um, branches, but I just kind of found these in the cupboard. And these work really well, so you just put it on the edge and just snip. And then once you've done that to all of them, you got to link them all together. Here are the gloves with a little bit of chainmail stitched onto the back of the hands. I was going to do the fingers, but the fingers really didn't look right because of the way that the chainmail goes. It just it looked really wonky and awful. So, just done the back of the hands. I'm undecided whether I do want to actually like maybe chop off the fingers of these gloves or not, or keep them like this. But for now, I'm quite happy with how the mail looks on the back. And without having any of my fingers, it means still got fairly decent movement. So there you have it, two nice, simple, easy to make gauntlets with an introduction on doing some chain mail. So this is the second part of our Templar uniform complete. Gotta get a few more of these uh, ring pulls to make uh, the chain mail suit. So I think the next thing that I'm gonna do for this is actually the sword, because I haven't made a full foam sword before so that's going to be quite fun to do and i hope you enjoyed this simple little foam build i'll see you in the next video and as always may the force be with you